today she will be talking to us on a topic titled taking the much needed risk ladies and gentlemen online and in the room and around the world please put your hands together as i welcome this phenomenal iconic woman just a mama ebay Thank you very much for that warm welcome. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, distinguished special guests of Hana, distinguished invitees, and to our distinguished host, Dr. Ivy Uyime King, we are delighted. We are extremely delighted. I say we because I represent a battalion of people who may not be here today, but are grateful for the continuity of Tinkesha. And just before I go on, I would also like to say a very huge thank you to God Almighty for preservation. Preservation of the Ubon King legacy, preservation of his family, and preservation of this great movement, Tinkesha. And so, Father, we say thank you. We say thank you. And we ask that as we continue to obey you in keeping this legacy alive, that you continue to strengthen us to transform the men and women who you have caused to be transformed by this great movement in Jesus' name. I have been asked to talk about taking the much needed risk. But before I go forward, I would like to talk about Dr. Uban King. I didn't get to pay a tribute when he passed, and that's because I was extremely hit by shock. Extremely. So much so that... I couldn't, I couldn't talk, talk about, about it publicly. I met I him for the first time when I was a newbie in the consulting space. space. I knew I nobody. Know, but, 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 you know you when know you have 300 followers on Instagram and you have been told that only people who have millions of followers can attract certain kind of persons. But I had a dream, I had a vision. And I knew I needed to connect the dots between those who had gone ahead and those who were coming behind. It means I needed to connect with certain kinds of people. And Dr. Ubon King was one of those men. And I didn't look at what I thought I was at the time. I took a leap of faith and I reached out to him. And guess what Dr. Ubon King did? He did not just honor me with his presence. A novice, a newbie, not a name yet, seemingly. He came with an entourage of men and women to honor me. And as he came, he didn't just come empty handed, he came with gifts. And I was was looking looking at the man, I was wondering, a man of such timber and caliber coming to honor a young lady with no name, with no face, seemingly. And after that event, he didn't stop there. He took my husband and I to lunch at a very expensive restaurant in Lekki, Lagos. And I was wondering what level of honor would a man of such timber and caliber give to a young person he didn't know. And as I watched the progression of his life, he was teaching me one simple thing. Love, respect, honor for humanity. Because people are the bridges between the past and the future. And just by watching his life, I have developed that muscle to do the same for those who are coming behind me. And I hope that just by observing him, you do the same. Because that's the way we build the Africa we want to see. Having said that, I'm supposed to talk about taking the much needed risk. And it's beautiful because that's my topic and I have just a short story to to tell. In 2020, I had an epiphany. At the time, I had consulted for about 10,000 plus entrepreneurs across the globe. And by the books, I seem to be doing well. Maybe top four or five consultants as far as sales and marketing and business communication was concerned. But then I had an epiphany. And that epiphany was a drawing back onto myself to look at what I thought I was building and what I considered a yardstick of success to actually measure and create a better trajectory towards life. And as I had that epiphany, what began to happen to me was me beginning to discover a fresh vision different from what I had known for the past six, seven years of my life. At this time, I had young people who were looking up to me, great business tips, successes here and there. But God started to say to me, there is a bigger pie. 
and that bigger pie, for you to clinch that bigger pie, you will take the much at risk. At this time, I had to go out of the zone of being known in a sphere of not being known to catch a glimpse of a vision of what is possible. Only when you get out of the noise and take the much needed risk. In this season of seeming obscurity, I lashed onto a vision of the Africa we want. And I began to catch a vision of what could happen if you and me collectively come together, put together our personal desires, our personal ambition, our seeming goals of how we want to live a better life, and begin to think about how our collective action culminates to growth, development, and advancement of humankind. And I know that that may seem like, well, I need to take care of myself, I need to pay my bills, but guess what? That zone where you are interested of in you and you alone, nothing great happens there. My discourse today is to challenge every young man and woman out there. Say, it doesn't matter what your life looks like right now. For some of you, you seem to have gotten the things you want. But outside that zone is a deeper calling to things that precede you. If the overall value you disseminate today is only tied to what you can get, there's too much more at stake. It means that you are going to come out of calculating all the things you do to say, why do I show up every day? If the money is not there, what else? What number of lives will remain stagnant if I don't show up with the vision that I carry? Will the economy of Nigeria remain stagnant if I don't gather the people who I am sent to mentor? You must begin to change the yardstick of success from seeming money in the bank account, how many cars you have, living in the best houses and flying the best private jets to, how does this move men, women, nations, leadership, economies forward? Because Dr. Nevera said earlier, if we don't fix Africa, nobody will fix it for us. And the young men and women seated here, it's not 10 years later. It's not 20 years later. News flash, the men and women who are seated here will never give way for you to come in. You have to take it by force. And that means that you have to stand up in every capacity you have been given and own a greater vision than the money, than the fame, than the position, than the seeming accolades to how does this move men and women forward into the greater agenda we have for this nation and by extension Africa. And as you sit here in your seats, begin to ask yourself, whose life is getting better by my existence? And that's a difficult question to ask. Because it's easy for you to calculate numbers, to say, well, I coached 10 people last month and their business is better. It only added to your pocket, if you are realistic. There's a difference between entrepreneurship and visionary entrepreneurship. Entrepreneurship is giving value and getting money, which is great. Visionary entrepreneurship is cutting a glimpse of what is possible and giving your life to see a difference in that niche market. That's visionary entrepreneurship. And guess what? The difference between Africa and the rest of the world is that we have a lot more visionary entrepreneurs in those areas than we have in this area. And that's what has kept us where we are at. And so I have come to say to you, the risk you are going to take would mean that sometimes you will go against the needs you have individually, personally, to push a vision and agenda that is greater than you but serves the continent of Africa. And that's okay. Because that's what we want to see going forward. We have complained for too long about what doesn't work. Guess what? God is waiting for you. Actually, he is. When he said in Isaiah, who shall we send? Isaiah was a prophet at the time. So why was God asking who shall we send when there was a prophet? Meaning it was for willing hearts, willing vessels, who will surrender their personal ambition, personal goals, and take up an agenda that we move this country forward. At leadership level, at business level, at family level, at education level, at media level, at arts level. Whatever cater of society. We need change makers. 
And these change makers will take the much needed risk because that's how we create our world. The world you see in your dreams for Nigeria, for Africa, it exists. I have seen it. I have touched it. I have lived in it. And I will dedicate the rest of my life chasing that vision. The big question is, will you? Or a bigger question is, have you discovered what you must give yourself for? As you live here today, let those be the burning questions in your heart. When you look at people, you are, insp you are inspired by them. Let the inspiration cause you to go deeper into yourself. It's not a coincidence there's an avalanche of problems erupting left, right, and center in Nigeria and by extension Africa. Insecurity, food shortage, poverty, kidnapping, and the list is endless. It's not a coincidence because where there are problems, there are solutions embedded in you and me. Walking solutions everywhere. But guess what these solution providers have been doing? We have been complaining. As opposed to reaching from inside out to bring out those solutions that will tackle the seeming problems upcoming every day in our society. By the grace of God, everyone seated here today, everyone who's watching everywhere in the world, would live here challenged, would live here extremely challenged and tired of that status quo to the extent where you reach from inside of you to turn that nerve of frustration into a solution. Because that's a nerve that shows an indicator of the kind of solution that can give you for a particular problem in the society. Finally, I want to say, as we collectively try to build our world, you and I are brothers and sisters towards accomplishing a greater good. It's not a coincidence that the scripture says a house divided against itself cannot stand. For too long, we have worked in silos. For too long, we have considered each other as enemies. If we must deliver our world, our new world, as far as Nigeria and Africa is concerned, you and I must truly see ourselves through the lens of sisterhood and brotherhood sent to accomplish one common goal, the Nigeria and by extension Africa we want to see. Dr. Ivy Uime King, I want to do something unconventional and I hope you permit me. I want everyone who is seated in this audience and joined from everywhere in the world to pledge. You know how we pledge to our national anthem or pledge to our country? This time around I want us to do it differently. I pledge to give all of myself to solve the problems that we see. We're going to do that today. And as we do that, let me tell you what will begin to happen. Your eyes will begin to see the solutions that exist within you that you can start immediately. That's what will happen. Because that time is now. And SARS was a statement. It was an agitation of a people who are tired and want more. But we're being tired and wanting more is unto solutions, not unto complaining. And so wherever you are, if you desire, please join me. I pledge, call your name. I pledge just a moment eBay to give all of myself as we collectively uncover solutions and collaborate to solve our common problems why truly loving each other until our mission is accomplished. So help us God. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, just a moment, eBay. Thank you very much for that short but powerful presentation. And on behalf of the Obon King Foundation and presenting this, thank you for making Syncation 2022 happen. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. And then it comes with other things that will. So she spoke about taking the much needed risk. 